a welcome. It's still Tuesday the 17th of August. Just a couple of frequently asked questions I want to address in this video. The first one is, uh, can the unvaccinated develop long COVID? And the second one is, what about babies, toddlers and young children? Can they spread the infection the same as older children? So we'll look at both of these in turn now. Um, so can the vaccinated develop long COVID? Now, people that aren't vaccinated, 10% or even more can develop long COVID. Some studies say up to 30%, depending on your definition of terms, whether it's four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks. But the point is a lot of people aren't getting better as quickly as they would like. And we know that over a third of a million people in the UK are still symptomatic over a year. So long COVID is certainly an issue, certainly in the unvaccinated. What about the vaccinated? Now, to answer this, we have to try and go to literature. So I'm going to really use this article here to answer this one. COVID-19 breakthrough infections in uh, vaccinated healthcare workers in uh, Israel. Because there's a lot of people talking about this, but I only like to go um, as far as the evidence is telling us. So what, what can we say with a, a level of certainty from the peer-reviewed literature? Or as certain as we can get for the, for the time being, really. So um, among 1,497 vaccinated healthcare workers. Now, to be fair, this was when the alpha variant was around. So what is going to be the difference between long COVID in alpha variant and delta variant well we don't really know too much about that um that i can't really say too much more we don't have that many studies that we don't have firm data yet on the delta variant so this is based on the alpha variant is it fair to extrapolate from one to the other yes absolutely i think that's a fair thing to do i would expect it to be very similar with the delta variant so um, so of this 1,497 healthcare workers at high risk, of course, 39 of that 1,497 developed breakthrough infections after two vaccines. That's 2.6%. So that's a, a relatively low amount to begin with. So that is very encouraging. Um, again, indicating that the patients hospitalised in Israel at the moment are largely the unvaccinated group and the ones that are getting sicker. And unfortunately, a few are now dying as well. And we'll expect it to be the same in the United States. This has been anticipated for some time. A parallel pandemic in people that are under vaccinated. But can people vaccinated get the infection? Yes. And in this study, it was 2.6%. All of these were infected after contact with an unvaccinated person. Now, that's a very interesting point. So none of these got the infection from a vaccinated people. Could they in principle? Yes, they could. But in this study... Um, all infected after contact with a non-vaccinated person. Now, of course, this could be different with the Delta variant because people can be vaccinated and still shed quite large amounts. So that is probably less true with the Delta variant, unfortunately. Most breakthrough infections were mild or asymptomatic with Alpha variant. Would I expect that to be the same with the Delta variant? Yes, I would. Seven out of the 36 workers, that's 19%, still have persistent symptoms at six weeks they took in this study. So remember, it's only 2.39, that the, the, uh, the 30, well, the 39 were 2.6% of the original number. And the ones they followed up, 36 of those, 19% um, still had persistent symptoms at six weeks, seven out of the 36 that they followed up. So that's 19% of those that became symptomatic. But if we take that for the whole group, that's actually uh, seven out of... 1,497 people doubly vaccinated and at higher risk, which works out at 1 in 213. So if you're vaccinated from this data, your chances of getting long COVID drop from about 10, 20% down to, uh, well, what is about 0.4%, isn't it? One, on, 1 in 213. So um, very reassuring data there in terms of uh, double vaccinated being very largely, but not 100%, but very largely protected from long COVID. So unvaccinated, 10 to 20% developing long COVID, uh, doubly vaccinated, about 0.2% developing long COVID. So I think that's the best answer we can give from uh, that one at the moment. The whole article's there, of course. Always put the links in, do uh, look at it for yourself. Now, the next one is interesting. And here there has been a definite... Uh, change definite change in thinking 
babies and toddlers infectivity risk. Now this is coming from this paper here. Uh, this is from the Journal of the American Medical Association, Association of Age and Paediatric Household Transmission of SARS Coronavirus 2 Infection, looking at households particularly. So let's see what this one was saying. So babies and just to give the background here, babies and toddlers infectivity risk. It was said that they were transmitting the virus and young children were transmitting the virus much less than older children. And that was taught by senior scientific advisors in the UK and the US. But what is the data actually showing here? A paper here published on the uh, 16th of August 2021. So this is pretty new stuff. So this is from Public Health Ontario. Based on positive tests, um, 1st of June to December 31st. Again, it's 2020 data. So this is alpha variant and indeed pre-alpha variant time. So again, how applicable this is. Um, it's going to be more infectious, if anything. So this study is looking at the difference in infectivity. And the difference in infectivity between a younger child and an older person infected with the alpha variant is probably going to be similar to the difference if they're infected with the delta variant, even although the delta variant itself, of course, is much more transmissible overall, as, as we know only too well, unfortunately. So um, with that proviso, um, number of uh, households, they looked at 6,280 households where the household index case, that was the way they got the virus got into the house, was under the age of 18 and many of these were younger children. Now, younger children less likely to bring coronavirus into the home than teenagers. So teenagers are more likely to bring it in than younger children were less likely to bring it in. But once infected, younger children were actually more likely to spread it to others. So within the household, younger children were more likely to spread it to other members of the household than older children. That is a change. We now realise that they are equally infective or from that data more infective. We'll look at why they might be more infective in a minute. So once infected, more likely to spread it to the other. Adjusted odds ratio of household transmission for children aged 0 to 3. 1.43 versus 1. So 43% more likely to spread the virus children from the age of 0 to 3 compared to older children and teenagers. So actually more transmissible. This is new. We didn't know this before. Compared with children aged 14 to 17. So in other words, you take children in the 0 to 3 and that's one age group. You compare those with children 14 to 17. That's the other group. The difference between the two is 43% more transmissible in the younger children. Now, the reasons for this, it was originally thought the reasons for this were biological, um, but the reasons for this don't seem to be biological. The reasons for this are behavioural. So people were originally teaching that young children didn't spread the virus as much. That's now known to be wrong. But the reasons for it uh, are require a lot of hands-on care and cannot be isolated when sick. So naught to three, no choice but to handle them, be close to them. There's just no choice. And you can't isolate them when they're sick, as you can with the 14 to 17 year old age group. So this is probably a behavioural spread rather than a biological difference. So it's looking like there's not a biological difference, but practically, because young children have to be looked after fairly closely, um, the virus spreads more within the household. Now, um, Zoe Hyde, an epidemiologist, University of Western Australia, not involved with the research, but she says this. Uh, the study showed that even the youngest of children readily transmit the virus. So the big difference here is young children are biologically just as able to transmit the virus as older children and adults. There doesn't seem to be any biological difference between younger children spreading the virus under the age of three and older people, contrary to what we thought just a few days ago. The key takeaway message for me is clearly shows that there is transmission from children occurring in the household. And of course, children can take it back into the household where it can then spread around. This means we urgently need to think about how we're going to protect schools when they reopen shortly. And of course, schools are already reopening in uh, the United States. So this has got quite big implications here. It means even young children, 
Even even nursery age children can take the virus home to parents and other susceptible adults and are likely to transmit it more so than older children. Early observations distorted by a few by a few social contacts during that time. So the early data that we got on this that said that young children don't transmit it was probably correct, but it was not for biological reasons. It was for uh, behavioural behavioral differences. So that is the change. So um, Germany now, for example, um, as other countries are vaccinating younger and younger people, whether you agree with that or not, um, so Independent Standing Commission on Vaccination recommended vaccines for 12 to 17 year olds now in Germany. Pfizer and BioNTech, Pfizer, BioNTech and Moderna vaccines approved for children 12 and older. And of course, in the United States, 12 to 15s have been getting vaccinated since mid May. So I thought that was an interesting couple of uh, questions there. So can the vaccinated develop long COVID? Yes, but they're much less likely to do so. Babies and toddlers infectivity risk, yes, the same as anyone else, basically, but actually more so than other people because we have to handle young children more closely. Therefore, household transmission is increased. And uh, of course, we know that household transmission is already a huge additional risk with the Delta variant. So quite big implications there for going back to school and the... Uh, increases that we're seeing that we're probably going to see in autumn in the UK and are seeing now in the United States. So no biological difference is the take home message. Okay, just a couple of frequently asked questions. So that's those. So thank you for watching.